Hey guys, today we are going to be talking about taxes and your tax returns. It is that time of the year again, so this video is going to discuss some general tips and suggestions that I learned when I was working in public accounting for almost two years. I did tax returns and external auditing, so we're going to discuss some of the common mistakes that people made with their tax returns that I saw and help you not make the same mistakes. So let's get started. Tip number one, when you go to do your taxes, be on time. Do not be late. The government does not like really favor people that are late. So make sure you're on time. April 15th, that's the due date, be on time. The second tip is know when to hire a professional. There's a couple of situations in your life when your taxes start getting really complicated. So maybe you just recently purchased property or maybe you sold property or maybe you just gifted $14,000 to your son or your sister or whatever it might be. Know when to hire a professional. If it gets a little complicated and you're having a hard time explaining it, probably go hire a professional. It's definitely in your best interest. If you start a business and you're trying to figure out how to do your, your business taxes and funnel that through a K-1 to your personal tax return, hire a professional, always. Okay, so the third tip that I have for you guys is to be prepared. Most accounting firms, to my knowledge, work on billable hours, which means however long it takes for them to do your tax return, is how much you're gonna be charged. And it's not cheap. So if you bring your little box of receipts and all of your, your junk into the accounting firm and you say, here you go, I'm ready for my taxes, they're gonna go through that for you, but they are gonna charge you so much money for that too. So be prepared. If you have a lot of random expenditures, create an Excel spreadsheet, list it all out. If you have a rental property, write down your, your income from your rental property, all of your expenses, include your HOA. Don't forget your HOA if you have a rental property. Um, just make sure that you're doing all of these things and laying it out very clear and it's easy to follow because if your accountant can't follow it, they're gonna try their best, but they're gonna charge you a lot. Okay, so the fourth tip that I'm gonna give you guys for taxes is regarding itemization. So if you itemize on your taxes, and when you itemize is you will typically, you'll use a Schedule A, that's the form in tax lingo. You don't have to really know that, but it is kind of important to know what form you go, you use for your taxes. So if you use the Schedule A, it means that your standard deduction, if you're single, it's $6,200. If you're married filing jointly, it's $12,400. If you have deductions in excess of that 6,200 or the 12,400, depending on your situation, you can typically itemize. So what pushes people into using a Schedule A is typically your mortgage interest if you own a home. You can also deduct on that same Schedule A, your mortgage interest, your mortgage insurance, your PMI if you didn't put down 20%. You can also deduct medical expenses, oh gosh, charitable contributions. So if you're if you tithe, all kinds of stuff. There's a ton of deductions for Schedule A. So just know if you have a home, that'll probably make you itemize. So that's okay. It just opens you up for a little bit more deductions as well. So the fifth tip I have for you guys is to know what you can deduct. And I have to say, sometimes there are some unethical accountants out there that will really try to push you into being creative. Don't be creative. Public accounting and accounting and that whole industry, that is not an industry that favors creativity. So don't do it, you won't win. If it's like worth, I mean, sometimes I've seen people actually trying to deduct $100, $100 and it would cause like a big red flag for them to be audited. It's not worth it. Don't be creative, but do know what you can deduct. And what you can deduct, again, I mentioned a little bit earlier, mortgage interest, PMI, mortgage insurance, charitable contributions, tithing if you give funds to your church, um, that kind of stuff. Th those are things that are very okay and very clear cut that yes, you can deduct those things. So be really careful about that because that's one thing that I've seen a lot of people kind of fall into the trap to. They're trying to get their adjusted gross income so low that they actually will make really stupid decisions and take uh, deductions that maybe they shouldn't have tried to do and maybe it will cause them to get audited later on. Not worth it. Not a creative industry. Just keep that in mind. The sixth tip, sixth tip, 
<laughs> that was hard. The sixth tip I have for you guys is if you are living in Idaho, and I don't know about other states, I can't really speak for other states, so bear with me, but if you're in Idaho and you give money to like a youth rehab type center, so Idaho Youth Ranch, The Ark is another one, any type of youth rehab type center, you actually get a double deduction. So you get your normal standard uh, charitable contribution deduction, and then you also get a little Idaho credit as well. So that's kind of nice. It's just something to be aware of. I didn't know that until I started working in public accounting, but that's kind of a cool incentive. Okay, so the seventh tip that I have, that was better. The seventh tip that I have for you guys is for those of you who have children and pay child care expenses. So if you pay child care expenses, this does not typically qualify for the at-home daycares unless the at-home daycares are legally established and they have an employee identification number or a federal identification number. So if they have a FIN, then they are legally recognized as being a child care facility. So that's great. So if your in-home daycare does, that's wonderful. But you can deduct how much you pay for child care, up to $3,000, I believe. So that's kind of a nice incentive too. Don't miss out on that write-off if you are paying for childcare. The eighth tip, of course, is for the students of the world. Those that are paying student loan interest or they're going to school, whatever it might be, you can deduct your tuition. A lot of you know this, 1098T, that's the form your school will give you. We're all very familiar with this, but this deduction is huge for students. It's, it's massive. It's a good deduction if you're a student, so make sure you're taking advantage of that. You can also sometimes write off books. You can, I've heard you can write off laptops. I've never done that. It's honestly, it's really hard to prove that it's 100% for college. So therefore it makes it a little tricky and the IRS kind of says, eh, not so much on that kind of stuff. But those are some general suggestions that I have for you when you go to do your taxes. Keep in mind everybody, I am not a CPA. So don't take my word for the holy grail. I'm giving you some suggestions but make sure you, you do your own research and you talk to a CPA, Certified Public Accountant. Talk to a professional to verify what you qualify for and what you don't qualify for. So that's my tips. Those are the tax tips that I have for you guys. Those are the common ones that I saw when I was working in public accounting. And remember tip number one, don't be late. That's the biggest tip I can give you guys. Do not be late when you file your taxes. There's some serious penalties that are associated with that. Not worth it, not worth it at all. And if you haven't, go over to WhitneyHanson.com and subscribe to my newsletter today. I give out some really awesome insights that I only share with my newsletter subscribers. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate the question. Keep them coming. This has been a really fun one. I hope you all have an awesome day.